I think it comes down to being flexible, adaptable, uh, understanding that not everything's going to go as planned and accepting that. Right. Because um, I think, you know, moving countries was very difficult. Uh, you know, getting through my PhD was difficult. Uh, switching careers was difficult. And I think once you recognize that life is supposed to be somewhat difficult and challenging it's supposed to have those moments it's never just supposed to be easy all the time mm-hmm. it's going to make for a very dull and unfulfilled life hey everyone welcome back to another episode of zen and now with me kishan morar and after a refreshing vacation and about with the flu seasonal flu at that uh it feels really good to be uh, to be back with you all and uh, for another episode uh filled with intriguing conversations and um today is no uh, exception Uh, we're diving deep into the world of uh, neuroscience and real estate uh, with a truly accomplished guest. Uh, he holds a PhD in neuroscience and is making waves as an up-and-coming uh, real estate mogul. Uh, please, jo- uh, please join me in welcoming uh, the multi-talented Ritesh Tayyar today. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Thanks for that introduction. Uh, says a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no worries. All good, man. Uh, how you been? It's been a while since we caught up. Yeah, I've been good. Yeah. Uh, Trying to enjoy the last of the summer, I'm busy with work. But yeah, no, everything's been good. Um, so for the rest of us who don't know uh, Ritesh, can you just give us a bit of an uh, introduction into who you are and, you know, how you got into, from how you went from neuroscience to real estate? So Kishan, kind of how we know each other is I grew up in Zimbabwe, um, came here when I was 16, started in high school. I eventually then went into the sciences and I completed my PhD in neuroscience. I really enjoyed what I was doing. Uh, I worked in the hospital space and the clinical space for about five years. Uh, part of that work was drug discovery. So we were working with a lot of commercialization of pharmaceutical companies. So there was a business component to that. Um, and as I got more introduced into that space and that arena, I really enjoyed it. So I transitioned more to consulting on the healthcare and business side. Uh, that eventually pushed me more into the business uh, side of things. and. Um, All through this, as I was in school, uh, doing my neuroscience, uh, as I went into uh, the commercialization space, and then when I went more to the business side, I was investing in real estate on the side. Um, and as a student investing in real estate, and you're making, you know, say, a hundred bucks a month return on a property that I was renting out, that was huge to me. And I was like, oh, there has to be something here. Uh, I read a couple of books, one of them being Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and that talked about, you know, the uh, idea of leveraging real estate. And, I thought that was super interesting. So I continued to invest in real estate. Um, and then I eventually got to a point where I was investing in real estate and all my friends and family were asking me about uh, yeah. how I'd invested. And I was giving them a ton of advice. And when I was going through my real estate journey investing, uh, I struggled to find really good support and really good guidance. Yeah. Um, the real estate agents that I were working with, they didn't have a ton of knowledge. They hadn't invested uh, you know, to the extent that I'd invested. So they were just mainly just managing paperwork. Um, and I got to a point where I decided to quit my job and go into real estate full time. I felt I had a ton to offer when it came to guiding people right. through uh, their investment journey. And then also worth working with people who are buying real estate for the first time. Uh, there's a ton of nuance there. It's a ton of education that needs to happen that doesn't happen. Um, so that's really what drew me to uh, moving into real estate full time. Right. That's an interesting, uh, interesting uh, pathway, you know, from neuroscience and But yeah, you were doing you you were doing real estate invest. You were investing while you were while you were still working in the health uh, health sector, right? Yeah, yeah. So when I was in uh, my PhD, I, uh, I received a scholarship. It came with a little bit of money. I had some money saved up, and I eventually thought I was going to live in Toronto. So I decided to buy a condo downtown. Okay. Uh, and I was like, I will live in this in a couple of years. So until now, until then, I'll just rent it out. And that was my first taste of investing in real estate. Okay. Yeah, you got the bite. I had the bite. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now, amazing that, uh, and like, how did it feel like just to like know that it's yours, something was, was yours, you know, something tangible was yours. It's, it's so young. Um, I didn't think too much of it. Uh, okay. you know, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't anything that I, that, uh, felt, uh, different for me, I guess maybe just, uh, my mindset was different back then. Um, but I'd rented it out. I kind of had tenants in there. I didn't hear from them that much. So. And I forgot it existed until a few years later when I decided that you know, I was going to move downtown. Um, and then I didn't end up staying in it at any point, but uh, it just became like a, a, an asset for me. Right, right. And like back then and compared to now, how do you, how do you compare you know, the, 
the living expenses and the prices, you know, of living downtown. Because I'm I'm sure a lot of people like are pretty interested in investing, but also probably like a bit apprehensive right now because of the market and you know the way the uh, the way governance is and the way you know just real real estate market. I know in Toronto is like actually quite quite crazy at the moment. I mean, there's so many high rises coming up. Um, I know there's opportunity for for investment, and uh, mm. I know a lot of people are probably looking into it, but just a bit apprehensive. You know, any advice? You know, yeah, you can um, The real estate market in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, generally is uh, is I'm trying to think of the right word. It, I wouldn't say that it's on fire. I wouldn't say that it's incredibly hot, because if you look at a lot of the other G12 countries, uh, their real estate markets are quite similar. Uh, we're seeing, you know, across a lot of countries, uh, especially the developed G12 nations, real estate prices have gone up. Uh, it's just a, it's a, it's a component of the economy that we have, the inflation that we were experiencing. Um, so specifically for us here in Toronto, Ontario, uh, prices are high, and they're, you know, they they shot up when I invested originally. Prices have gone up, and they'll continue to go up more than likely. Um, but this isn't uncommon for big cities. You know, we're still cheaper than some of the big metropolitan cities out there. Uh, this is just what happens when you're part of a big metropolitan city. Prices and real estate prices in particular will go up. Yeah. Uh, living is high downtown. Absolutely. You know, when I moved downtown, I, I lived with a roommate. You know, it was a great time. But you can't afford to live downtown on your own. Uh, if you're, you know, a student or if you you know just started working, uh, it is a, an expensive city to live in. But that is yeah. city living. That is a part of the, the journey. And that is a part of the experience, in my opinion, of living in a big, bustling metropolitan city. Uh, don't forget, Toronto is, is is up there when it comes to city. Oh, yeah. We're leading in many ways, quality yeah. of life, uh, in terms of our uh, education, our the research, our the innovation that's coming out. Uh, we're one of the leaders in AI. Um, there's a ton going on in, in Toronto that uh, that adds to that uh, flair that makes Toronto uh, a bustling and at the same time expensive city. Um, and and j- just to comment on the market, right now we're seeing interest rates slowly starting to come down. We've seen yes. it in cool. Uh, unemployment's a little bit high still, but uh, generally, we're seeing uh, a more stable, stabilized economy. And since we've reached, reached those inflation targets, we need to start now reducing the interest rates to kind of make sure that we don't go overboard on that. So we're going to see interest rates continue to come down. We've already seen two uh, drops in the real estate uh, in the interest rates. Uh, and I anticipate we'll probably have another one or two uh, interest rate drops. And we'll probably see further interest rate drops next year. Um, and with that being said, as interest rates come down, the affordability to buy real estate yeah. goes up because now instead of saying, hey, you know, at a 5% interest rate, I could only buy a property worth, say, a million dollars. Right. If interest rates drop to like 4%, you know, anything lower than that, that's a significant drop. Your affordability starts to go up. So we'll start to see people coming back to the market. We'll start to see prices again start to go up. Uh, and that's just the cycles of, of real estate. Uh, there, It's always a cycle. Um, it's, it's always going to be up and down. Yeah. Uh, in, in a relative state for it, always increasing, if that makes sense. Yeah, I read something interesting the other day. Like, uh, uh, the amount of time your mortgage now has increased from, um, I think it was 25, 20 years to like, uh, I think they've increased the the years of how many years you can take your mortgage on. Yeah, amortization. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's just all. So it uh, it was twenty five years. Yeah, it is twenty five years. But we've just had a new regulation that's uh, been. Uh, uh, legislated that's going to increase that to 30 years. 30 so years, yeah. Properties, you know, uh, certain properties you'll be able to get a 30 year amortization. Yeah, that's a good thing. I think a lot of people actually um, prefer that. I know longer, longer fixed term uh, time to actually pay off the mortgage because I know uh, it's been a struggle for a lot of people. I mean, we are also ourselves probably, you know, looking to invest, looking to purchase, you know, mm-hmm. as we as we go along. And I think uh, with the interest rates and and the markets now cooling a little bit, maybe it's time to like you know just you know just see what's out there and what inventory is available. But uh, you know it's like mental, like you know, like we don't know, like I don't know personally a lot about real estate, but like having conversations with people who do, you know, help me understand that okay, this is the way to go, and this is the do's and don'ts, you know, because there's always there's always black holes where people will go into and like you get the you get advice from people who actually are just trying to like just sell you instead of just you know selling you a home like that right. yeah absolutely and you know the on the 30 year amortization it's going to reduce your payments so it makes homes more affordable in that nature uh, but some people think that oh now I've extended how much I 
you know, I owe the bank because your interest is going to, the amount of interest you pay will increase. Yeah. The length of, you know, the term of your loan is now longer that I'm going to continue to have to owe the bank money for longer. Uh, there's two ways to think about that. You know, one is the sense that you brought up that it makes it more affordable for you to buy today, which is great. Um, and yes, it's going to increase the amount of interest and yeah. the term of your loan. Um, but I think that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think the idea of owing money to the bank and having debt on a home is not a bad thing. Um, yeah. It's actually counterintuitive. A lot of people think I need to pay down my mortgage as soon as possible. Um, and you know, the, the idea you want to think about is if you're getting money from the bank and the bank is loaning you money at say four or five percent, um, that is a loan to you at four or five percent. The money that you have saved up that you will use to pay down your loan further, that money you have saved up could be used to invest in something and maybe get you a return of eight or ten percent. All right. You invested in a mutual fund or you invested in another investment asset and it's returning you anywhere from six to ten percent, say you're still doing better than what you'd be owing the bank. Owing the bank. So instead of trying to pay it off, it's like you can keep that debt there. You'd rather go invest that money elsewhere and yeah. pay the debt off slowly. It's a stay, it's a it's a very stable debt, right? It's with the bank. Um so you know there is there's a couple of ways to think about it. And I think also with Toronto's um landscape, you know, it's 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 so it's so beautiful. Like that in itself also is is a selling point. I mean, if you if you if you look at I mean I personally like cycle, you know, along the lake show and like it doesn't get old, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That 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 view of the of the lake and you know just it just gives you uh perspective into like you know you you you're humble and grateful that you're able to live in a city where you know one it's very it's very clean uh mm -hmm. it's taken care of and the like the scenery is like for me is like second to none because i mean it people take care of, mm -hmm. of the environment you know Absolutely. and i mean coming we both coming from africa i mean it's also stunning like africa is really stunning it mm -hmm. can be the most amazing continent to to live on however like there's just certain parts where you feel like you know it's just been let down by by people who just don't really care and just abuse the environment and mm -hmm. you know it doesn't make it very very comforting to to live um absolutely so i think also that's a good selling point for for like a lot of people they just want to know that what they're investing in is is worthwhile not just from any from a, a monetary perspective but also a lifestyle perspective absolutely. and i think like when you give that when you give that comfort i think a lot of people will be like okay you know, let let's see what's out there, and I think watching your journey, watching your your reels and your you know your your ad, your advertising and your your work ethic, I think you know you you give that to people. I uh, you 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 sell that 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 lifestyle, and I think people appreciate your honesty because honesty. I mean, if <laughs> if you're gonna swindle people, they're gonna know. They're gonna see you know straight past the bullshit. Like absolutely. So. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think Toronto is a fantastic place. You know, we, like you said, we both come from Africa. We've lived outside of the country. We know what it's like living elsewhere. I think some people take it for granted. Yeah. We have a very safe country, despite some of the stuff you'll read on the news. Uh, we have a ton of opportunity here. We have great education, great healthcare. Um, you know, people complain about our healthcare. And yeah, our healthcare system is very uh, uh, overwhelmed at the moment. But, you know, if you go look at the US where they have a private healthcare system, the number one reason for bankruptcy in the US is. Healthcare. Oh, pharma pharmaceuticals, man. They keep, yeah, they keep pumping more drugs than just actually fighting uh, the root cause. It's just, you know, that's that's what it is about. Yeah. So, you know, in, in Canada, we, we, we have a lot to be grateful for and a lot to be thankful for. And that's why I live here. That's why I'll continue to live here. That's why I buy real estate here. And, you know, as you said, you know, I, I'm honest because I do, I, I, I recommend and I'm a, I promote what I do. I wouldn't promote something that I haven't done that hasn't worked for me. Yeah, for sure. And I'm sure, like with your with your your your, your real estate, you know, business, and um, how do you like how do you like kind of like balance that lifestyle just to take a break from uh, from from your from the schedule that you have? Yeah, you know, coming from you know a, a nine to five job where you know you have consistency in your day, you have consistency in the amount of money you're going to make at the end of the yeah. month. Moving into real estate and being, you know, more on the entrepreneurial side is there's no certainty in what you're going to make at the end of the month. And uh, with real estate, you know, you're busy in the evenings and weekends. That's when people are available to go see properties, uh, to do showings. Uh, you know, you're during the day, you're making phone calls or you're at a site if you're doing any building or renovations or development. So the days are busy, the days are long. 
Um, and for me, what's been really important is keeping a routine. I'm very much a, you know, a, a, a person of habit and routine. Uh, so the morning times for me are sacred. You know, I'll wake up early. That's when I'll go to the gym. That's when I'll do stuff for Ritesh. Because, you know, at 8 o'clock, the phone starts ringing and it doesn't stop ringing. Um, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning, that first phone call from someone on a construction site saying, something's flooded, something's gone wrong. And if you're trying to, like, do something for yourself, you can't. Your, your mind's going to be on on the fires that you need to put out. Uh, yeah. I mean, routine is important. You know, keeping some time early in the morning for myself. Uh, that's been, I think, a saving grace for me. Yeah, routine is uh, is important. I think uh, a lot of us get... Uh... It's so it's so like absorbed by you know what we're doing after after we wake up. Um, having that that little routine also just helps you just calm yourself down in the morning. Because some days, I mean, some days are just hectic. I mean, the last if I just think about the last two weeks for myself, I mean, yeah, you know, you just get you so exhausted from the day, um, mm -hmm. and not having that morning routine just kind of like you know you, you don't feel good. It is, yeah. it's, I know it's more of a it's it's easier said than done, but it's it's a, like a mental thing, you know. Just knowing that you've 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 given yourself that that opportunity to ground yourself in the morning before you start your day, mm -hmm. and I know it's for us for me it was very tough the last few weeks because uh, you know coming from vacation you you're in another routine. That's there's it. no real there's no real like uh, like how do I say this. You just you just wake up and go, you know. Yeah, you're just trying to catch up. Yeah, right. living living as you can as best you can. Yeah, look, I won't I won't trade it for anything in the world. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, coming back yeah. from vacation. No, no, for sure, I'll take that any day. But <laughs> yeah, and then coming back and 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 getting sick, like it takes you. It really takes out takes it out of you. Uh, yeah, I think those those are the those are the worst moments when you've been kicked out of your routine, say from vacation, and then you get sick, and it extends this out of routine. Because jumping back in is the hardest part. Oh yeah, for that, sure. that those couple of days that I'm forcing yourself to get back in is Man. the hardest. Um, yeah, it, and I think that's where you have to really just remind yourself that if I push past these couple of days, it's going to get so much easier. Yeah, I think as we grow older, I think I've learned to like just listen to my body a little more. Whereas mm -hmm. prior to like in my younger days, like even if I wasn't feeling well, like I'd push through and like try and like be active and like. You know, really like, oh, I think I'm missing out on something, you know. Mm. But nowadays I'm like, okay, if it takes you a week or two, just rest. Yes. So you don't really have to go gung ho. You don't really have to like, get a workout in. It's okay because your body's telling you to, you know, take it easy. You need to recover. It's important. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think as we, as I grow older, like you, I learned to listen to my body a lot more because I've just, I think I've I've destroyed my my body when I was younger because it was just continuous go and no rest even when injuries occur just it was continuously going and mm. I think now I've now it's more just about maintenance uh, yeah. for longevity making sure in my in my years to come that I'm just able to still be mobile because you if you're not mobile when you're younger we see it nowadays with our grandparents and even you know slightly with our parents and stuff the uh, age and uh, you know, all of those uh, ailments and everything come into play. You have to think about those things. Absolutely. I think we're, you know, we're, we're part of a generation that's very lucky. We've been given a lot of the tools and we have a lot of the data and science and knowledge to tell us what we need to do to be healthy and mobile when we're older. Yeah. Um, and it's just, you know, doing that work now so that, you know, we can be healthy and mobile when we're now elder age rather than, you know, being immobile and kind of almost suffered yeah. through your, your your last few years right yeah i mean like the work now you do sometimes it sucks like sometimes it's <laughs> it's hard work you're like thinking to yourself why am i doing this to myself mm -hmm. but the long-term implications of it is 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 beneficial yeah the long-term implications are huge even the short-term implications you it sucks you know going to that that doing that workout when you don't want to do it but afterwards you feel great um you know the next couple of days you'll probably feel better and then you know, you're obviously slowly chipping away at this investment that's going to help you when you're when you're in your older age. Yeah, I see investment in your body, investment in your <laughs> in your home. I think you're in the in the right space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think yeah, everything's. Uh, I think it, it just goes to say nothing's built in a day, right? Everything is no. small, consistent contributions to your health, your fitness, 
your real estate, you know, portfolio, your investment, yeah. you know, it's all small contributions over time that, uh, that accumulate. No, for sure. Before we continue with today's episode, if you're enjoying it, if I could ask you for a small favor, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. It will not only help the channel grow, but it will also allow me to bring you a lot more guests and a lot more experiences. Thank you. Back to the show. And like confidence wise, like how do you get in, in terms of your mental strength, like when there's an adversity or something that, you know, doesn't go your way or, or you feel like, you know, it hasn't gone exactly how you planned in your head. Cause sometimes we play that scenario in our minds and this is how we're going to do it. But then we actually get to the, you know, to the experience, it, it doesn't go away. How do you, how do you overcome, you know, something like that, especially now, now in, I know in, in, in real estate, there's a lot of ups and downs. Yeah. That's a great question. Um, I think it comes down to being flexible, adaptable, uh, understanding that not everything's going to go as planned and accepting that. Right. Um, so I think, you know, moving countries was very difficult. Uh, you know, getting through my PhD was difficult. Uh, switching careers was difficult. And I think once you recognize that life is supposed to be somewhat difficult and challenging, it's supposed to have those moments. It's never just supposed to be easy all the time. You know, like a very dull and unfulfilled life. I think challenging, a little bit of suffering, I think it's important and I think it comes at you at different times. And if you understand that it's part of the process, I think you're less likely to feel rigid and you're less likely to fight it. So right. I think don't go my way. It's, you know, it's just accepting that's, you know, uh, if, if I've done everything I think I can and it's, and I, I have no control over this moment, then it's accepting it. I think it's a large part of just acceptance and understanding that you will get through it. They yeah. won't work out the way they're supposed to work out, uh, whether you have faith in God or the universe or whatever it is, Something. It, it'll work out. Uh, it, it always works out the way it's supposed to work out. Sometimes yeah, we always, we always being told, oh, you, the universe has your back, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. In that moment, it might not feel that way, but yes. And we know like, we not, we don't even know when it will happen or how it will happen, but when it does happen, you'll be like, ah, okay. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, in term, when we were, when you were younger, were you like, did, were you somebody who was like just level headed or, or you knew like, did you have a temper like, or did you like, like really it probably... temper as a kid, uh, my family's known for having a, a very vicious temper. Okay. Uh, I don't think I had, I don't think I had that gene, uh, fortunately or unfortunately. I was always, uh, I was very active as a kid. I, 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 you know, I was, I was very hyper. I was hyper. I, I had supposedly ADHD as a child. I was very active, very hyper, always getting into trouble. Um, and I got into trouble a bunch of times and with some severe repercussions. And, you know, I think seeing the impact that I had on my family, it changed me as a child. Um, so in my teens, I was much more conscious of my actions, not only for the consequences they had for me, but for the consequences they had on the people around me. Um, and I think ever since then, I've been fairly level-headed and uh, a little bit more aware of, you know, knowing everything that you do has a consequence. Right. You could treat somebody badly. You do something that's not right or dishonest. There's a consequence. Uh, nothing's ever, uh, nothing ever is un unreacted. There's, there's a equal and opposite reaction for everything that uh, that goes yeah, on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, knowing, knowing mom and dad as well, like, you know, every time we've spent time with them, you know, you never say they'd have that, that, uh, that courage to, to discipline their kids. But I think I, like you said, like there were always repercussions. They were always like, if you did something wrong, you were held, you were held accountable for it, you know? Absolutely. And yeah, I think our parents as well, like something happened. If some, one of my, my, myself or my sister did, did something, we were, we were held accountable for it. You know, were punished in some sort of way, knowing like, okay, don't do that again. Uh, yeah. But that comes also with good grounding. And I think we were very, I think we're very fortunate to come from a generation of, we had good upbringings, good grounding, good values instilled into us, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and I think looking at today's, uh, you know, world, it's it's scary the amount of uh, how, how the youth are, are progressing so much quicker than we did. We, I mean, we still had the opportunity, we didn't have any cell phones or social yeah. media, or we didn't have like, uh, we built our, our lives on motor mechanics, things like that, you know, playing outside, being with friends, yeah. socializing, social aspect is so important. Like, you know, look hindsight and looking at back in hindsight, 
we were so blessed to like have those experiences with friends playing outside, socializing, meeting new people, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, like you said, we grew up playing outside with our friends and being very present and in the moment. Uh, I feel, yeah, that this generation, you know, some of the younger uh, generations have a challenge. They have so much data and so much stimuli yeah. for them. Uh, and I don't think we have the tools or they have the tools to figure out how to kind of parse that, you know, how do you figure out what you need to let in and how do you figure out what to stop? Yeah. Uh, I think that's what, I think we're all learning that now. Yeah. I remember uh, just an example of that is how is, um, there's one, one of the Batman movies with Jim Carrey, mm -hmm. Batman Forever, you know, he pulls that, uh, that device, uh, and what it does is it, 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 uh, protrudes like data into your mind. Okay. And it, so data into your mind and then feeds it back to him, you know, but you're constantly engaged. Right. You, 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 you like fixated on that, on that signal. And that's, that's how, that's how, how it helpful. feels. Yeah. That's how it is. Like, that's yeah. how it feels. Like we constantly engage we're constantly consuming data, news, you know, like false information and what's real, what's not real. And I think having that good grounding and that, that awareness to step away from it and to do something actively just i think is a good good way to to balance your you know just your 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 energy basically yeah 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 from yeah like you know, from a neuroscience perspective you have this stimuli that's just triggering all kinds of catecholamines endorphins all these chemicals in your in your brain uh and your body starts to adapt and build thresholds to it and then you're not getting that same type of response because right body's almost numb to it to a certain extent. Um, so we have to learn how to take social media breaks, how to take stimuli breaks. Uh, I think we're still learning how to do that and how to you know, integrate that into our lives. I think some people do it better than others. Yeah. That I'm struggling with, you know, because I like to work and I'm always on the go. I'm on the phone, on my laptop. And it's learning how to kind of take those breaks, how to separate and create some moments of stillness and silence. Uh, yeah. I can't tell you, I, mean, I don't know, you tell me the last time you felt you were bored. I can't tell you the last time I was bored. No, I can't remember. Right? It's just you're, there's always <laughs> just something to do or something going on. There's just I, I, the, I, the last time I remember being bored, I, I would have been when I was a kid. Yeah, actually, even yeah, to go f as far back, I think both of us, our personalities were always like active. Mm -hmm. I don't think I was ever that bored where I couldn't find something to do. Right. There was always something to do. Or there is always something to do. Yeah. It was either like, yeah, I was not, yeah, like, I was, like, also, like, one of those kids, like, I'll find a golf, club, golf club, take a golf ball outside and just chip it into my mom's windows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I even think, like, that, that, that kind of, like, activity is, is not necessarily bad. I think it's, the, it's, like, today, it's that, you know, if you have a second to yourself or, you're, or you have a moment of peace or freedom, you're going to open up, pull up your phone and open up an app and you're going to be social media or you're going to be playing a game there's just this no moment to just kind of be still and present and yeah thinking about now yeah being being in the moment is very important like like you said we, we we're learning about it as we go along and just to be still like the other day it's been a while since i did a, a, a yoga you know a yoga routine and mm -hmm. just being even just sitting there with your thoughts why did you why did you do this today what's the intention today yeah uh, it was away from the phone it was away from everything it was just a guided, you know, routine, but it felt good to like just, you know, one heart and one hand on your heart, one and one on your stomach, and just, you know, the intention you set, like, okay, why did I come here today? You know, right. Just giving yourself the awareness and to say, okay, I've come for my, I've come for my workout, and then after this, even if it's ten minutes, I feel that I've accomplished something, you know, mm -hmm. other than just my 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 work day or whatever I need to accomplish for the day. It's yeah. just for you, that accomplishment for yourself. Yeah, yeah. and I think that the health benefits on your mental health are huge. I think that's so important, so healthy. Yeah, for sure. Because in the last, last couple of years, I mean, I've lost a couple of friends to, to suicide. And, you know, you think think back if if they've just like, what were they going through? You know, mm -hmm. what, what was actually the, you know, the root cause of why they actually had to go and do what they did to themselves and there were times also when I was in that space and thankfully like I, I was able to catch myself and and also seek help when I needed it because mm -hmm. I think not being able to do that for yourself 
uh, is a challenge in itself, but you also need like um, comfort from people who you can reach out to. And I think not having that support mm-hmm. is also like a challenge. And I think a lot of us, we, we isolate ourselves when we, because I mean, we come from a, from societies and that way we don't really share much mm-hmm. of our, of our challenges because we've always been taught like you really have to be a little bit more, um, uh, manly. You got to be a bit more, you know, uh, being able to, you know, just go through your challenges alone and, and fix it yourself. Uh-huh. And I don't know how you feel, maybe something that, you know, you can share. But I feel like we we didn't have that opportunity to actually express ourselves, you know, on, openly and honestly without feeling, you know, we're doing something wrong. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's part of that, uh, the old school mentality of masculinity where, you know, you can't share your emotions or if you're going through something difficult, you can't reach out to uh, people around you or you don't have people around you who reach out to. So you end up kind of not having this ability to express or have an outlet for something for you to have your own sort of uh, healing, right? Like talking about things, going to somebody, sharing it. That there's some healing part in just doing that. Um, and then also, you know, having the opportunity to go find help. Uh, yeah. You know, I think the idea of going to a therapist uh, before was a very, uh, and a lot of stigma attached to it. Um, now I think it's a lot more common to say, hey, I'm going to go see my therapist. And you're like, oh, that's great. You know, you're treating, you're looking after your mental health, like you look after your physical health, you go to the gym. For your mental health, you're going to go see a therapist. Good for you. Um, that wasn't around, you know, oh. 10 years ago, right? Um, oh, no. It's definitely something that's newer and maybe even still not even commonplace. Maybe yeah. more commonplace for us here in Toronto, but uh, in some other countries, it's definitely not. Yeah. I think a lot of companies also now introduce mental health days. Uh, yeah. They also introduce like organizations that can come in, you can go for free, you know, mm-hmm. you know, it's toll free numbers, pick up the phone and just talk about what's happening with you. I mean, yes. I mean, that should be the, the, the status quo. Like it should be free. I think it should be for everybody. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we still at that stage where it's like a little bit private, you know, yeah. but, uh, like you say, we are making strides in that, in that field of, of having, you know, resources available for people who actually need it. And I don't blame the previous generation before us because it was very tough for them also. Yeah. They also went through their own challenges and they also never like really had the opportunity to express it like openly, maybe, maybe like 2% of the world's, you know, households were like openly you know, accepting of people who like your or your 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 close knit family, like, okay, this is how I feel today, and let's work through it. Mm-hmm. Whereas I think majority of of households, this is just my experience. I'm not quoting anything. People don't <laughs> don't take it uh, out of reference, but or context. But I know a lot of my friends from my community. Just I think they went through life uh, as as a norm, mm-hmm. you know, and. It's just an observation, and uh, but now that we get to speak about it openly and we share our experiences, I think a lot of people like, like accept it, and they that they themselves also like uh, encourage. Now we having these conversations openly, and they're like, "Yeah, man, you know, good for you. Like, thank you for sharing. Like, we didn't know. Like, I also went through something, and it's so good to hear that somebody I know." has gone through challenges in their life. It's not just me. Right. Yeah, I think you realize that uh, we're all kind of going through some challenge, sometimes similar, sometimes not, but just being aware that you're not the only person going through this. There's some comfort with that. Yeah. Yeah. And when you said, you know, you you realize that some of your friends are just going through the norm. What do you mean by that? I think just like living life, like what they should be doing at certain stages of, mm-hmm. of life, you know. Okay. They should be like, oh, at a certain age, you should be X, X, Y, and Z, you know? Right. That's what I mean, you know? Got it. Or it's okay. like the perception of, if I don't if I don't achieve that at X, Y, and Z, at the age of X, Y, and Z, have I failed? No. Right. You know, I also was like, I was in that, oh, I've got to be like, at a certain age, I got to get my degree, I got to get into the workspace, at a certain age, I got to get married and, you know, family and, you know, because you feel like, because you see people, you don't want to be... Like you don't want to be ostracized from like right because because I felt that way when I was growing up. Like high school was a very challenging time for me in terms of like um, confidence wise. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think it it took me a little longer 
to regain my confidence. But mm-hmm. once I left high school, I think I found myself again because mm-hmm. I think it was a very uh, accepting environment. Friends, you know, that I made, lifelong friends, people who were actually like, you know, there for you if you needed it. And till today, they're still there if you need something. Um, but I feel like nowadays we don't have to live in that norm or that cycle of certain accomplishing things at a certain age. You know, age is just a number. You can do it anytime. Absolutely. Yeah, I think you're, you're absolutely right. Those societal and cultural uh, pressures that are put on us to hit sort of milestone by certain yeah. is can be very daunting, can be very heavy. Um, and I think times are different. So, uh, you know, I think we're, we're in a time now where we are not getting married as early as our parents were getting married. Yeah. As early as our parents are getting married. Uh, we're spending maybe more time at school. We are experiencing life in different ways. Um, so yeah, if you're, if you, if you don't have that, that freedom to live your life as you should, and you have all these cultural and societal norms pushed onto you, you can feel choking and you can kind of feel like, you know, you're not yeah, just it's like suffocating. Suffocating, absolutely. I mean, I, I, on my social feeds, I see a lot of uh, posts and podcasts of uh, the brown community expressing like yeah, our generation speaking like this now about, you know, the challenges that, and speaking openly and honestly with their parents, like how it feels, you know, mm-hmm. when, when those pressures are put on you. And uh, it's a learning experience for everybody. Yes. You know, our parents are learning, like, and we learning, and then the next gen, we, we're just trying to like the next generation has it a little better, you know. Mm-hmm. I think as you grow, as you go, generations and generations, you just want it to, you just want them to feel a bit more easy in, in a world where there's so much of chaos at the moment. So absolutely, I mean, it's scary, like to think of you know wars. This, I mean, it's 2024 and we still have war. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's it it's hard to fathom, and you know, just. Like I, it's just you ask yourself, where's the peace? Mm-hmm. It's another human being that you're trying to like, a life that you're trying to take away. I mean, innocent souls are just, you know, perishing, and it's 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 hard at times. But yeah, we can only control what we can within our own, you know, environments. And as hard as it is, we can we have to really also look after ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know you have to make sure you're healthy and happy and sane before you can help and provide contribute to anybody else right yeah that whole analogy of when you're on the plane you got to pull that mask and put it on you <laughs> help anybody else right it's the same analogy as you use all the time yeah it makes so much sense like you gotta you gotta be you gotta be secure first before you help somebody else mm-hmm. and i think a lot of our a lot of our societies we don't we try and give so much of ourselves but we not ourselves help we're not helping ourselves like we give so much of, uh, we give pieces of ourselves away so much that there's nothing left for us. Mm-hmm. And that's when burnout happens and exhaustion yeah. and then you don't feel like you can accomplish or, or you know, do what you want to do. Mm-hmm. And I feel like a lot of people like are going through it right now, like literally. Yes. So, but I always tell them like, you know, the the, the hard, the road is, is, is tough. It's long, it sucks, it's up and down, it's going to get nasty, it's going to get very emotional, but... Once you get to the other side, man, it's such a good feeling. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I and think especially with with social media and, you know, you were saying earlier about us, about us being isolated. We are still very isolated despite the fact that we're so connected with all the com- te- different types of telecommunication we have. You can FaceTime, phone, text somebody in a, in a second and you're communicating with them. But it's, it's a very different sense of communication. Yeah. So it's different from being uh, in community. Right, um, I think we're losing a ton of that sense of community, um, so you can feel very lonely and isolated very quickly. I think, yeah, like you make an important point there. Uh, we're so connected, but yet we're so lonely. Mm-hmm. You know, that's how that's how, because your friend is your. I mean, nowadays your phone is your best friend. Yeah, it connects you to the world. It keeps you. It keeps you engaged. It keeps you busy. Whereas, whereas. Not, you know, you, you have to like find that, that awareness just to put it down. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I remember, you know, I saw a meme on social media and I thought it was funny because it was, it was true. You know, when we were kids, the best thing we could do was just hang out with our friends and do nothing. 
or hang out and listen to a, a CD or a cassette or something, um, or hang out and like watch a movie. Like, you know, that was something we go to someone's house and you could just sit there and chat and watch a movie for hours, or hours, something for hours. We don't do that now. You know, we're listening to anything. It's like, you know, on our own and we're listening to the first 30 seconds of it and it's next onto the next thing. I mean, you, you probably see it around Toronto a lot. Like everyone's with their headphones. Even if you go into a coffee shop, there's no one having conversations. Yes. Everyone's with their laptops. Everyone is just in their own zone. You know, yes. there's no one having conversations. And like I sound one day I just walked, I, I told someone this the other day and like, I just walked into a coffee shop and I'm just like looking around and I'm like, nobody's talking to anybody. Everybody's just plugged in and wired in and it's like, Oof, okay. Yeah. It's a small observation and I'm like, you're, we lo we're losing uh, the ability to converse also, you know. I'm yeah. not saying you must, you have to be like so friendly and just go and talk to anybody, but just, you know, just that general conversation because getting things off your chest is, is, is so important. Like keeping it in, it's hard. Like you, 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 you hold on to so much of, of weight when that weight is too much. So. Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's, it's super important to be able to just talk to somebody on your day as simple as that. Uh, and you know, not everybody has that person to talk to about their day. Um, even if you do, you're working and you're talking the whole day to this, in these meetings, to this computer, yeah. you come home and you got all these things to do. And like, there's very little opportunity to just kind of sit and talk and be present. And, uh, yeah. I think you, it's, it's something that you have to kind of really be conscious about putting into your life. Otherwise it's just so easy in today's world to not be able to do that. Yeah. And you don't have to have a ton of friends. I mean, your circle can be so, your, your circle can be like very small, but you know, it, and it, it's, then that's okay because you don't have to have a ton of friends to feel like you have community. You can even have a best friend, like one friend and feel like you, you know, you're okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's again, it's, it's uh, quality over quantity. You'd rather have one or two really good people that are good friends that respect you and your loyalty with than to have like 30 friends who you barely get to see and barely have a relationship with. Uh, yeah, definitely quality of quantity. And, you know, just on the community thing, I, I think it's super important. It's been something I've been thinking about a lot, you know, especially when you look back at, you know, our generation when we grew up as kids and the generation before us, especially, we were raised in communities. We weren't just yeah. raised by our parents. We were raised by grandparents, our aunts and uncles. Our cousins, like, you know, my dad talks about growing up and, you know, he grew up with his cousins and, you know, his friends and community. Um, when we were, when I was back in Zimbabwe, we grew up more in a community uh, than I'd say today. Because today, you know, you're, you're very isolated. You're not necessarily growing up in a community. You're raised by whoever's at home with you, whoever's at home the most with you, whether that's a nanny, a parent, a sibling. Um, we're, we're losing the sense of community in the way that we're raising children. And then we're also losing the sense of community for us because we feel we're always talking to people. We feel like we have this false sense of community, but it's not, it's not the same. Yeah. It's so important that note. I mean, I was raised, I think by my next door neighbor, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, I grew up like in their, in their arms and I never spent time at home. Like I was always with my other, my aunt or next door neighbor or somebody was like, taking care of, but I grew up with, a, with, with different, a different community, you know? Yeah, but like you said, it perspectives and influences. Yeah, I mean, just the other day, like we had some family over from South Africa, um, and it's such a small world. We just met up for a little bra and barbecue and stuff. And the 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 uncle we met was like he actually knows my dad. Like he moved here in the seventies. Wow. But he he was actually like his best friend was literally and was my uncle actually. <laughs> wow. Okay. So you like think to yourself. These guys were literally next door, you know, and now all the way, all around, uh, all across the world. Right. So you, you find these, these people that were actually like connected to you somehow. Yeah. But that's, that comes from community. Like you said, we were, even our sports coaches became our mentors, you know, absolutely. Um, teachers, everyone like just, and we still hold them dear to our hearts today. Like I still today will call my teachers, madam or sir. I can't say their first name. Right. Yeah. We grew up with a different sense of, I guess, uh, scholar and discipline. Yeah. Yeah. So another topic. Uh, tell our friends how we used to get beaten. How oh my God. We used to do you stand there at the day and you're like, you get, you get on the hand. Yeah. 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 
you know, yeah, it was, uh, you know, I look back at it with very fond memories though. So maybe uh, yeah. we're fortunate for that. It gave us, gave us values as well. It gave us, uh, respect as well. Mm-hmm. It, it made us learn respect for, for, for not just your, your elders, but for everybody around you. Yes. Yes. And I think one, one thing that I actually take away from that is like we grew up, I grew up playing cricket a lot and always away from home. So living or playing like elsewhere and, you know, they will always teach you whenever you come across uh, anybody elder or anybody, you just take your head off and you say, hi, hello. Yes. You know, that's just a, a sign of respect. Even if, even the chefs that cook your food, like you go into the kitchen and you say, you know, thank you for the meal. Um, because they also working hard to provide you with, a, with, with sustenance. Um, so it, it's, it's good to say, you know, please and thank you. There's nothing, it costs you nothing. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And it gives you the sense of gratefulness and, you know, I mean, encourages this respect. It's, yeah, you know, I think we were fortunate to have been raised, you know, under those pretenses. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people these days have, uh, have that opportunity to have that type of discipline, respect, kind of. Yeah. Into them, built into them. No, 100% agree. And like, it, it, it makes you also thankful for the, for the grounding that we, we received. Mm-hmm. It allows us to now also navigate challenges so much, you know, with, with more confidence. Yes. We don't, we don't, we don't struggle with like trying to figure out, you know, or find a resolution. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes, yeah, it gets a bit annoying when we can't find it, but we know we're resilient enough. Yes. We've, exactly. we've, yeah. We've, we've been built up with like with a bit of strength. Yes. Yes. So. And I think hopefully uh, the next generation can learn, you know, we just, that's all we're trying to do. I think nowadays we're just trying to impart our knowledge and give them the best, uh, best, best opportunity to you know, navigate life. Cause it's not easy. Life, life is never easy. Yeah. It, it, I think it's harder now than it was in the past. Yeah, for sure. The comforts and technology we have. Yeah. We're so connected and wired in it's, 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 it's scary, but also it, it has its its perks as well, the pros and cons to everything. Yes. I mean, mm-hmm. we're so connected now, we can just call home at any time. Whereas before you had to like, wait for the time, buy a world call card or send a letter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you had to buy those old cards. Yeah. With long distance on it. Yeah. Yeah. But it's nice. <laughs> and in terms of like, travel, I know travel is like a big part of your, of your life. Yeah, love to travel. I think it's important to get new perspectives, get a new appreciation for what you have, what you don't have, uh, opens your mind and your uh, your thoughts, your way of thinking in so many different ways. It's also a good way to break your routine and monotony that you might be building up over time. Um, so yeah, definitely a big proponent of traveling. Uh, I went to Thailand in the summer um, and uh, this year I'm going to go to Argentina and Brazil. Oh man, that's amazing. Want to go see the Amazon before the Amazon doesn't exist anymore? Don't get eaten by an anaconda, please. Uh, those anacondas got to watch out for me. No. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm more worried about the spiders and <laughs> all the smaller things you can see. Yes. Anaconda is yeah. coming. Uh, yeah, no, travel's important. How did you enjoy your Germany trip? Man, it is... I can't, I can't, I can't explain to you the feeling... Um, we went to the Berlin Wall, and you know, you just you get that that sense of history. Mm. Uh, even while you're on the hop on hop off, you know, they explain to you like east and west how it was divided, and you know, it actually happened there. You know, it was part of history. You would feel that that energy. You know, it's still there. The energy is still there. It, mm. I don't think it ever leaves. Wow. Um, but Germans and I mean Austrians are, are extremely welcoming people. I think. We, a lot of people see them as this, you know, this harsh, um, very, very straightforward, you know, persona, but they're very welcoming, very accommodating and, um, it was just, just an awesome trip and having to, the actual reason we went to Austria was actually to watch Coldplay. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Because we actually got tickets for Coldplay first and then we booked that. Uh, <laughs> that um, this is some hardcore Coldplay fans. Yeah, I mean, it's once in a, I, it's the best concert 
or one of the best concerts we've ever been to in terms of like just energy, entertainment, music, vibe, people also like, even though we were like, like probably like a very minimal amount of brown people within the, you know, in that environment, but you never felt out of place. Wow. Okay. It make you feel so welcome and, and it, it, you, that's how safe it was, you know? Because prior to that, it was Taylor Swift's concert and that got canceled because there was a, a security threat. Oh, wow. Okay. The week before, it was supposed to be in the same stadium, actually. Um, but there was no sense of like urgency. You didn't feel unsafe. What was the security threat then? I don't know. I think there was just a... Um, I, I think there was from some form of terrorist threat or something wow. to, that, to that venue and they canceled the show. So oh, I see. a lot of Swifties missed out. <laughs> Yeah, so what do, you, what do you call Coldplay fans? Coldies? Coldies. Yeah, no, I'm a big fan of Coldplay, but not, not too... Uh, have travel. you seen the, the the hype in India, in UAE? Because they're going, Coldplay is going to play in January there, and people oh, were right. like, trying to buy tickets. Like bots, I think bots bought, and bought them out really quickly, and they're like selling them at like 20 times the price now. Of course, of course. But no, it's a, uh, even just Austria's, Austria, for me, I've always, I've been there before. It's been a, a top five venue, uh, destination for me. Okay. Because I've been to the countryside as well. And nice. for me, that was, that was breathtaking, Lusa. I mean, that was breathtaking. I don't, I don't, if you ever get a chance to go to Vienna, I mean, to Austria, try and Absolutely. go into the countryside. Yeah. Like, that for me is like Austria. Vienna is beautiful as well. Don't get me wrong. Mm. But culture, it's got, um, excitement. It's got, it's food, it's got people, you know, but just when you see that mountain, you see that, you see those little houses in the, you know, like a prairie and then it's mm -hmm. just stunning. If you ever go, I would recommend Austria to anybody, anybody. Got it. Wow. Okay. Okay. Noted. Yeah, for sure. If you, it's, it's on your bucket list, make sure you get there. Even Berlin. Berlin is very, uh, very historic, architecturally very, very beautiful, stunning. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and not a lot of high rises. That is good. Yeah, I guess because there's there's a lot of you know uh, that that city and that civilization developed so long ago, right? Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Like, I know is Berlin's the the capital, right? Of Germany? Yeah, I believe so. Or oh, you're yeah. uh, you're, just, you're putting us on the spot now. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Maybe that's why probably. No high rises because of being a, a capital like Washington. Oh, Washington, they aren't that many high rises. Because I think a lot of those buildings were built so long ago, right? They were yeah. in beyond like, you know, three or four stories. Yeah. And, you know, you're not going to be tearing down those buildings, right? It's no, no, no. Pretty significant. But no, I, I believe also you, you traveled to is it Guatemala, right? Yeah, that was uh, last year, the year before. We uh, went there to go. We went to go hike one volcano so we could see another volcano, uh, Ben. It was probably, you know, one of the most impressive things I've ever seen in my life. It's like sketched in my mind forever. Um, was, you know, hiking. This hike was very difficult to begin with. It was uh, a challenge. But once we got up there, the view of seeing an active volcano, uh, you know, seeing this lava come out, seeing it smoke, smelling it, hearing it, feeling, the, you know, the heat. It was, uh, it was truly spectacular. It was definitely something... Uh, that I'll never forget. Amazing. Yeah, hiking is something we've just gotten into now recently. Mm. Um, if we ever do get a chance, we'll try. But I mean, I... Tremendous. For sure. And altitude-wise, it probably was like a challenge, right? Yeah, so we were in a group of 10 and half the group got altitude sickness. Uh, so we took some, like, some pills that I had the time to help with it. Uh, but still half the group, you know, had altitude sickness. Uh, it's just because you're going from... You, you, you're you hiking up on a, the most direct route up there so that you can get above the clouds to see the volcano. So it's a very steep climb. Um, and if we did it in a, you do, you climb it in like a day, you get at, to the top within the day. Um, so yeah, you're, you're hitting uh, pretty extreme altitudes and there's no way to, to avoid that. Do you recommend like training before it, like doing some form of like training or just be like aware that I think you, you have to, yeah, I think you're going to have to just be aware that you're, you're going to have to deal with some sort of altitude sickness if you're, some people will more than others. Uh, yes. But what you can train for is the hike up there. Okay. Uh, 
because the air gets thin the higher up you go. So your odd lungs and your body has to work a lot harder uh, to bring in oxygen. So definitely being healthier, being in better shape. Uh, I definitely struggled. Uh, and I, you know, uh, I, it was, I was kind of kicking myself and saying, you know, I should have prepared and trained a little harder for this. Like, I mean, you're pretty fit as well. I mean, you're pretty in shape. So, uh, yeah, I think it was still tougher, man. It was, I, I think, uh, it, it, it's definitely something that I, I took for granted. I didn't prepare for as much as I should have. Noted, noted, guys. Remember, just uh, prepare. <laughs> if you're ever going to hike altitude mountains, make sure we, we do our our training in before. Because I was watching the other day, um, Everest, um, you know, and and uh, high altitude climbers, what they what they need to go through. Because I think in uh, in Nepal, they don't just allow anybody to to climb. You know, sure. you have to a certain amount of you have to be a certain level to climb. Yeah, it's it's dangerous. It's not something you can take lightly. But that's the beauty of like planet forever. You know, even just looking at a planet on the plane and it's you know, you, you, you feel like really insignificant because it's massive. Like we feel like so small, you know? Yeah. And you're like thinking to yourself, there's so much more of this world to explore and like like you said, travel gives you perspective. It also helps you understand culture, um, not just in your environment, but all over the world, people People love a certain way. People enjoy certain things. You know, they they practice certain ways of living, and it's interesting to see. Like, and you can adopt some of it because some things might help you, and some things might not. You know, absolutely. Yeah, there's so much to learn. Um, and I also think you know we, we have a very fast moving, work centric culture here. So when you travel, you you're reminded that you know this isn't the only way to live life. Yeah, I think coming from South Africa, we had to we had to really slow down. Mm -hmm. Because, like, Canadian culture is not as fast-paced as as South African culture. Yeah. And a friend of mine asked me about uh, work-life balance. Mm. Uh, and he said, like, if we could just talk about that more, like, you know, I would I should share a lot more of what I feel is is work-life balance. And for me, it's like, I think work-life balance is individual, mm -hmm. uh, but also your environment plays a, a a huge part of that. Absolutely, yeah. So what I would say to him is that I kind of like, if your environment is fast paced, you know, you, you've also got to try and for yourself, make it as slow as possible. Mm -hmm. I know at times it's not easy, but you have to also like make that jump or take that step to, to slow, to slow your, your, your pace down. Cause I mean, you age like 10 years, like before you know it, if you don't, if you don't take care of yourself. Absolutely. It's critical. Yeah. I mean, you know, coming from, from high pace, I mean, both those professions are pretty intense. Yeah, a hundred percent. If you're not looking after yourself, you know, the thing is you, you can't do your job well if you're not looking after yourself. Mm -hmm. So it, it's important if you want to do well in what you're doing to also keep looking after yourself. Yeah. And I'm sure like nutrition and diet also comes into that, into that fold because what we consume is, you know, will play a part in your, in your, in your energy levels. Because if you're consuming the wrong things, then you're going to feel lethargic. I'm yeah, not saying... If, yeah, if you're getting shit unprocessed food, you're going to feel like shit. Yeah, exactly. And I think because yeah. you're so fast, it's everything so fast, you like, you feel like as if the, oh, I'm just going to grab a quick burger, or a quick, 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 um, you know, fast food, uh, and just thinking to yourself, okay, I don't have time to eat. I don't have time to pre prepare uh, a healthy meal. Mm -hmm. Let me, let me just consume whatever's in front of me. Yeah. And I mean, your your fitness journey, you've gone through a, a lot of a lot of like challenges. And I'm sure like trying to when you first began, your nutrition wasn't as what it is now, right? Of course, yeah. You you learn along the way. You you know, everybody's body is different. So you gotta learn what works best for you. Uh, um and yeah, so it's over years of just figuring out what works best and you know, I feel the science and the the, the the knowledge we have on diets has also changed considerably over the last couple of decades. You know, at one point it was, uh, you know, veganism, then it was vegetarian or being carnivore diet. And I think there's all these different diets out there, paleo diets. I think you got to figure out what works best for you. Yeah, yeah. It's, no one can really tell you how to do that. You have to figure yeah. it out. Trial and error as well. I know a good friend of mine as well, like she was in my first episode of uh, on my podcast and 
she shares like her journey with 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 chocolate like she loves chocolate mm-hmm. yeah but she's aware that also consuming too much of it is also not mm-hmm. good uh but she also had to learn through her journey her fitness journey that she needed to incorporate it into her into her diet but not over indulge right yes and that's the challenge i think we all face is not to over indulge in something that that we feel is is good for us because mm-hmm. have everything in moderation. Yes. Yes. And I think that's why I think we a lot of people like struggle is finding or being just aware of what not to consume when to consume it. Yeah. Cuz yeah. easy, I mean easy meals are, are are there constantly now. Yes. Yeah, I think you have to be very selective of what you're putting into your body. Yeah. Inconvenience over, you know, quality of food and uh, the right macros for yourself and uh, you will pay the price for it. I mean as a neuroscientist as well you probably understand it a bit more in depth in terms of uh how the body works and the brain. Sure, yeah. You know, and it, it you can complicate it as much as you like but it's very simple, you know, like natural uh whole foods are just better for your body than you know processed foods uh and those whole foods usually take a little longer to prepare and you have to go out of your way sometimes to get them. and not as easy as going through a drive through um but you know like anything else you know anything that's worthwhile takes time right so same thing applies to food but like you said nowadays we have like tools and 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 things that make it quicker for us like an air fryer is like yeah uh, it's, it's one of those apparatuses that's just you know 10 15 minutes and you're done yes yes absolutely yeah we have a ton of tools that make it easy uh but i feel there's even easier options out there you know from put this in the microwave and in 30 seconds you have uh, a full meal. Yeah. But it loses that nutrient. Yeah, it's nutrient dense food essentially. You're good. You're just eating empty calories at that point. Yeah. But I guess we we learn as we go, right? That's it. Mindfulness over awareness. Yes. <laughs> But no, uh what's next for you? What's the next uh what's next for you, Tesh? Um, great question. Uh, I don't really know. I think, uh, continuing to help as many people as I can, uh, invest in the right things when it comes to real estate, educating as many people as I can on, uh, what makes the rights, uh, what are the right fundamentals for buying, you know, you know your own personal residence for buying an investment property. Uh, that's the goal now is just to continue to educate people. Um, and then for myself is to continue on my fitness journey and my fitness goals that I'm still working towards um continuing to travel continuing to be there for my friends and family uh those are the things that are important to me those are the goals that I'm working on no amazing thank you for sharing uh thank you for sharing your journey with us today and uh yes guys if you're looking to uh to purchase a home or mm-hmm. or invest reach out to Ritesh I'll leave his his uh his details in the description uh awesome guy you know he'll have your back Yeah, I appreciate. It. Thank you for having me. It's a great to have this conversation. I really enjoyed it. No, I appreciate that, man. But uh thank you guys so much and and until the next episode. See ya. Bye.